to Unit 6, Lecture 3. We'll be talking about regulating the cell cycle. Learning objectives. Investigate how the cell cycle is regulated. Compare cancer cells with other cells. Cell division is an important part of a body, okay, um, both to grow, but then also to repair and replace. So growth, right, and then repair or replace new cells. So cell division is a controlled, in a multicellular organism like ourselves, cell division is a controlled process. So you can see her, she's got a, um, a broken leg or ankle or something, okay? Um, anytime you have a cut, even something as simple as a cut, a cut, a uh, broken bone, all right? We need to time and control cell division to be able to do those things when they're supposed to do those things. Healing a bone takes a lot of different steps. So you can see here, there's a fraction, a fraction in one of her leg bones, okay? And what has to happen is your body has to create new bone cells. So where that injury happens, whether it's a broken bone, whether it's a cut, whether it's surgery, whatever, okay? The cells at the edge of that inju injury, right? So the cells over here, okay, are going to have to divide rapidly to in order to fill in that gap as quickly as possible. All right. Once that injury starts to heal, that rate of cell division actually slows down. So we have to be able to control cell division, start stops, and so on and so forth. One of the major, and this is actually a protein, okay, were cichlins. So scientists found a protein, right? And what they ended up finding was that it was, it was in a cell that was undergoing mitosis. It was undergoing cell division. They didn't know what this protein did. So they ended up putting it in a cell that isn't dividing. And then what they noticed is that mitotic spindle started to form. And remember, the spindle is used to separate um, chromosomes during division, okay? So that spindle is used to actually pull them apart. Remember anaphase where we have spirit fingers, okay? So the spindle is actually pulling them apart. What they decided to do is they called them cichlins because it, it's part of the cell cycle, okay? So they help control the cell cycle. And these are a whole group of proteins that regulate the cell cycle. So the regulatory proteins or the proteins that help control the cell cycle can either come from inside the cell, internal, or external, outside the cell. So internal regulators respond to events that are happening inside the cell. And then they let the cell cycle proceed only when certain steps have already happened. So this is like saying in, um, you know, in school, all right, you don't necessarily learn how to make words until you learn your ABCs, okay? So you've learned the ABCs, now you can use those ABCs to build words. Once you build words, you can then use those words to build sentences, and then you can use those sentences to build paragraphs and so on and so forth. So we can't get you to build sentences if you haven't learned your letters. Okay, so once you learn your letters, you can, so that's what the internal regulators do is they say, okay, this point has been reached, we can keep going. This point has been reached, we can keep going. External regulators, however, respond to things that are going on outside the cell. Um, they can be from outside that cell in particular, so somewhere else in your body, or they can be outside your body into that cell they cause the cell cycle to slow, speed up or slow down um, entirely, okay? These are more like checkpoints, right? Okay, so the internal regulators are a lot like checkpoints, whereas the external regulators are like hitting the gas in a car or the brake, okay? So we're gonna, so, you know, so the internal regulator um, 
is going to be like, hey, you've, uh, all right, in the directions, okay, you've, if you have a, if you're using an app to give you directions, all right, now turn left. Whereas the external regulator is just like, oh, I've got, you know, all right, the lights turn green, I can hit the gas. So what they do is they do, they do things a little bit differently, but they control that style cycle, which remember is G1, S, G2, and then the M phase, okay? All right, growth factors are a huge part in actually setting up the growth of a cell, okay, or a growth of an organism, whether you're talking about a multi-organism or a multi-cell organism. All right, so either talking about wound healing where we want to speed up the process, okay, because we want to fix that broken bone, or in the case of embryonic development where you go from one cell to a whole slew of cells in nine months, okay, 10 months, 40 weeks. Oh, excuse me. Apoptosis is a really, really important process that our cells usually undertake when the cell cycle goes awry, okay? When the cell control is bad, okay? What happens is the cell actually decides to basically program itself to die, okay? And then the lysosomes open up and digest the cell from the inside out, okay? This is a huge, this is a huge thing for normal body function, all right? Our cells are programmed to do this in the case of, um, damage, they'll do it in the case of damage, or when something, it's time to get rid of that cell, that type of cell and put a new cell in place. Um, during the course of uh, embryonic development, will turn, will, uh, cells will commit apoptosis, okay, and then it'll put a new cell or a new type of cell in its place. So it's a really, this is hugely important. This is one of the problems that it is with dealing with cancer is because our cells are already programmed to do this when something's wrong, okay? And so cancer is when something's wrong, but this process, apoptosis, isn't working to control that. So cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. And what happens here, okay, is that you see this tumor growing, right? So the cells are supposed to be this nice flat sheet of cells, okay? But what happens is these cells actually end up bunching up and creating that tumor. That cancer isn't responding to the normal regulatory si signals, either internal or external. It's not responding to any of those cell cycle controls. The cell cycle is disrupted, so it means that it's going faster. We're growing cells faster than we're supposed to. And they grow and divide uncontrollably to create tumors. So here we go, here's a, you know, so we end up with one cell, okay, that becomes many cells, right, that ends up becoming a tumor that travels. So the cell begins to divide abnormally, and then the cells produce a tumor. And what the reason that um, cancer can be problematic, so there are two types of tumor. There are cancerous tumors, and there are benign tumors. Cancerous tumors, what happens is they actually start to displace and damage the cells and tissues around it, whereas a benign tumor is just it's just creating a crowd, okay? Whereas a cancer tumor will actually end up starting to suck resources, kill cells around it, take over, okay? Whereas, um, so there are two types of tumors because you may have a family member that has a benign tumor that has to be removed um, versus a cancerous tumor. And then last but not least, the stages of cancer are based on where in this um, cycle they are, but then the cancer cells actually move to another part, and this is called metastasis. Metastasis, or metastasizing. 
And that means that the cancer cell has left its original cell or its original tumor and gone into the bloodstream or some other circulatory process, like, because it can come through the lymphatic stream, it can, uh, but a lot of times through the bloodstream. Okay. Um, and it can get to, uh, it can deposit in other places and grow a new tumor there. So in all cancers, control over what has broken down? The cell cycle. Okay, so that G1, S, G2, M, all right, all that's the cell cycle. That control has plummeted. Okay, something's wrong with that control. And this is what makes, like I said, this is what makes cancer so difficult to deal with, is because that control is already in place. Okay, it's normal. So when that control has gone awry, it's trying to figure out how to recontrol that control, I guess you could say. Right. So cancer results from a defect in genes right, that control the cell, cell um, growth and division. Okay, so this is a defect in genes, otherwise known as a mutation, which we're going to talk a little bit more about. But a, it just means that something's wrong in the genes. Because remember, the DNA ultimately controls the cell. Okay, so the DNA is the genes. And if there's something wrong in the DNA, then that means there's something wrong in the control. There's a few different types of surgeries. Um, if you've had a family member dealing with cancer, they may have gone through one or more of these. So surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy are the most common modes of uh, treatments for cancer. Um, the problem is that, especially with chemo, somebody that's going through chemotherapy, uh, chemo doesn't always just get the cancer cells. Um, it a lot of times attacks right, you know, all of your cells or, or a lot of your cells, which is why chemotherapy patients end up losing hair. Um, they have problems with other parts of their body. Um, it's, you know, it can be, it can be rough. Uh, but what it's trying to do is it's trying to actually kill those cancer cells and keep them from dividing. All right, we're going to talk more about this in class, and I will talk to you later. Have a great day.